Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about building a company versus building just a job. So if you're in the industry or thinking about getting into window cleaning, this episode is for you. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, like I said, today we're talking all about building a company versus building just a job. And there is a big, big difference. Now, I have to say, if you're in business, you have to step back and look at what it is you're actually doing. Are you building a company or are you building just a good job? Now, neither of them are wrong. I'm just some dummy who sits here in front of a screen. But... I prefer building a company. Companies have value. Jobs don't. You just turn around on jobs, right? You just stop working and that's pretty much it. In a company, there's business. Um, there is um, value to that. There is ownership to that. There is all of those things that make a company different than a job. Now, you have to figure out which one you want, obviously, and you have to figure out which way you want to go and what makes sense for you. Now, again, these are just some typical ideas, but you have to think about long versus short term. Now, you know with all of these new uh, TikTokers out there, you know I hate door knocking, hate door knocking. In fact, I have a video on my own personal YouTube channel. Uh, If you haven't gone there yet, just it's... uh, at under or uh, Jersey underscore nation, Jersey underscore nation. Go there and, and follow me and subscribe. By the way, I'm trying to blow that one up. Content out a few times a week actually over there. But I don't like door knocking, and the reason is a it's this big thing. These young people see this money, and that's totally cool if it's something you want to do. But listen to this: if you go and do door knocking, it's a one and done type thing, right? That's why they do it in solar. That's why they do it in roofing. You have to get somebody to just say yes. That's the only value to door knocking. You kind of see they're a little bit pushy. The guys are so good at what they do. But man, no one has a good feeling when you show up at their house. No one has a great feeling when you force them into getting this service done. No one does. So they're not going to use you again. One and done. If that's your world and you just want one and you want to go on to the next one, cool. But I'm telling you, that's how you're building a job. You're getting a couple hours. You're not building a company. Building a company takes longer than, of course, just building a job. So I don't like door knocking. That's for a whole nother video, uh, by the way. I won't even open that one up. There's so many people door knocking, by the way. Um, yeah, I'll get angry comments about that. But that's the difference between the long term and the short term. That's one prime example, right? I am looking for the long term. That is a business. That's a business. Now, you you can't see your company 20 years from now. You can't see exactly what it is. You can hope and you'll pull some sexy number out of your your pocket like, I'd like $1 million gross and 10 trucks in the road. But you didn't really do anything to get to that conclusion. And that's cool. It's dreaming. But seeing the long term and what's best for the long term is growth, right? That is the growth. You can't take a building, build a foundation for a one-story house, tear the house down and go, yeah, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I want a 10-story building and build it on that foundation. You can't. You have to start over or at least build and strengthen that kind of foundation. That's the hard part. Building this long-term versus short term is kind of the big the big question. Now, a job is just getting money now, but I want to look at how is this going to benefit me for the long run? How is it going to benefit me going forward? And not only the door knocking thing I'm not really a fan of, but I want to create an experience that makes people happy that if somebody's blown away, they're going to tell everybody. Now I have them selling for me, long term. If I do them for the next six months, every six months for the next 10 years, how many people are gonna tell? How many people are they gonna run into that maybe want my service? That is a long term goal. 
So I'm more focused on that than just getting people in. Now, don't get me wrong, especially if you're new in business. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and tell me how long you've been in business. Uh, just put the number of years and then everybody reading the comments will be totally confused. Um, but if you're new, it's really hard. You go, okay, well, I need to get from $0 to some money really, really fast. And if you like that and you wanna do that door knocking, it will get you in some money and that money can then be used to invest and blah, 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 but it's just not a great lead. It's not a good way that you're putting your company out there either, in my opinion. Again, I'm just some dummy do your thing. But if I go to somebody's house, I make them feel like crap, I leave and they said yes, they're gonna think about me and look, I mean, I can't believe this XYZ window cleaning company pushed me into this, man. Gosh, you're so proud. Like, nobody's like, you know what? I'm really glad that you pushed me into this. I want them to have an amazing feeling, but it it's harder work. It takes more, more push, more all of that. But what are you focused on? The long term or the short term? Now, the long term, by the way, is still going to make you money now. It's just what you're going to be doing down the road. And as you know, in any business, there's momentum. It's like when your vehicle breaks down on the side of the road. Like The sooner you can push this thing off the side of the road, the better, right? That's the big piece to it is that momentum comes with long term. It doesn't in the short term. So when you see these guys doing this for 10 years and they've done it right, it like almost just does its thing, five years, three years, it's because that momentum helps. That's the long-term versus the short-term. And in my opinion, the number one thing you can do for a long-term success in a business is focus on your repeat customers. When you start in business and you have zero customers, getting one customer is the only option. You put in a lot of work to get customer number one. When you have customer number one, you do the service, you make the money, you go, wow, that was awesome, let's find customer number two. And you almost kind of brush off customer one. You guys know I'm a huge, huge uh, advocate of the dentist clothes, just a stupid phrase I made up. The dentist clothes is just this. When you're done, I'm gonna clean your windows, and if you've been in business, you know this is how it works. But when I'm done, I walk around with you. Say, hey, everything looked good. They go walk around and go, oh my gosh. This is so amazing. It looks so good. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. This is like so much light. It's never looked so good. They are never happier than at that exact moment it's completed. So why not say, hey, yes, absolutely. This is awesome. Um, so great. So your next schedule, we have you down. Do you want to do three months or would you like to wait six months? Now it's called the dentist close. Because no one's ever gone to the dentist. And when they leave, they get the little thing that says, you'll be back in six months, here's your date. And no one ever goes, oh, I can't believe they're trying to get more money out of me. No one does that. No one is, is seeing it like that. But when we do it, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm not going to like, uh, that's too much. Six months is just, I don't. Do you think you need to get your teeth checked every six months? I mean, how many of you have gone years without a cavity? If the dentist didn't do what they did in your checkups, you'd still go years without a cavity. But yet you still go every six months. People go, oh man, yeah, but I love the feeling of, you know, when they clean my teeth, like it feels great. Okay. So that awesome feeling is what they get by getting the windows clean. That's why I call it the dentist clothes. It's just because to get over the mind the mind block of getting a repeat customer to do something more often that is the number one thing and it's not the customer's mindset it's your mindset it is absolutely not the customer who is going to balk at that because here's the thing if you say hey did you want it every 3 months or three months from now, which will put you into uh, June? Or did you want to do uh, six months, which will put you into September? A, I didn't ask a yes or no. If you say, would you like to reschedule? They go, no, no, I'll let you know. That's a defense thing. I gave you an option. If I give you an option in the way the conversation works in the uh, path of least resistance, they're going to pick one of the options. 
Now, I know it's best for them to get their windows cleaned regular. It stops, you know, issues coming up, of course, just like when you go to the dentist. But the, the just the, the light, the happiness, the awesome experience. I know I'm the best company and I know everybody that I clean windows for is happy. Do I want them to be happy more than once every two years? Yeah. So I'm totally on board. They're totally on board because right now they're super excited. If you confidently put that out there and they still go, ah, yeah, you know what, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let you know and uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. Sweet. I'm going to call them. I'm going to actually call them tomorrow and say, hey, how'd everything go? Everything looked good. You had a chance to see it in the sunrise, the sunset. How did it all look? Oh, they looked great. Oh, man, it was so good. Oh, perfect. Cool. Well, I didn't have you down for your next appointment and I just wanted to check back in with you if you had thought about it yet, if you wanted to do the three months or six months. If they still don't do something, you're going to just call them, you know, in a month or two, or you put them on your spring blast or your fall blast. But you're going to get everything you can to get them in and repeat. I know it's the best thing for them. I know it makes them happy. I know without a doubt I'm the best company. You have to get over the mindset that they can have it done more often. And that's why I think about the dentist. That is not anything except for your confidence or your guy's confidence. It's just understand when you go to the dentist, no one questions that. They understand that that's the best thing. You can explain to me right now why you go to the dentist every six months. And if you don't, you should probably start going to the dentist. (laughs) No one says to the dentist, well, maybe some weird purple probably do, but they'd be like, hey, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, six months from now it gets into September. How's the, uh..." you are like, no, 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 I don't want another dentist appointment. I'll call you. They'd be like, oh, uh, okay. People usually don't go out of that, right? Here's the thing. If I get one customer and only do them one time, I have a job. That job was done, done. Hopefully they call me again. But if I have a customer and they're on a repeat schedule, one customer means I have a job every six months from now until I upset them, they die or they move. Now, think about that in the terms of five customers, 10 customers, 100 customers. If I have 100 customers and they're all on board and I'm confident and I get them in every six months. Now, if they do three months, it's even more. But we'll say six months. If I can get 100 customers in every six months, that's 200 jobs a year I have without doing any other selling, without spending another dime on advertising, without having to convince somebody else to trust me. And every six months, I have customers that are blown away. And you're like, well, yeah, that's cool for the experience. Those blown away customers, now every six months, they're so happy they're going to tell somebody. And if they don't every single time, they're going to at some point. I have 200 customers or 200 jobs every single year for 10 years, we'll say. By having 100 customers, I have 2,000 jobs in the next 10 years. Think about that, but then think about that in growth. That is the difference between a job and a company. If I can build that, if I can build that side up, I'm going to have a strong company. The other thing is when I wake up January 1st, I already got work on the books. I got a great batch of work on the books. I may already have June sold and booked in January. Now I know all my planning. I know that I'm going to need a new crew by XYZ if that's the way I'm going. I'm going to know June is my busiest because that's where all my customers are. That's where my, my, my hardest push for advertising is. There's so much in the industry. I'll call it a flaw. A flaw in a seasonal industry is we just don't know. We don't, we don't know where our work's coming from, right? So we work so much harder to go get all these new people because we just assume that more customers means more business instead of seeing more frequency creates stronger companies. That's the difference between a job and a company. And by the way, if you're liking this podcast, I didn't do the intro in the beginning. I'm moving it to the middle, but I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is what I do. That's why I put out content. I want to help people. I genuinely want to help people with their business, but I also love putting orders in, right? That's how I make my money. So if you're getting anything out of any of these videos, please let me be your rep 
My number is 862-312-2026. I'm literally the only jersey you are uh, that you know. Save it in your phone, text me, call me. Just save your cart, and if I put it in, it costs you nothing extra, and I get credit for it, that's a high five. And there's new stickers, and I don't have one sitting in front of me. But let me know, and you will get a limited edition Cool Kids sticker, which, by the way, uh, is only available for people who buy from me. So use me. And uh, subscribe to me, by the way. Uh, if you're on YouTube or looking at you have a YouTube. My personal YouTube channel is Jersey underscore Nation. These podcasts are on there. This is in on WCR. But on that, there's everything from shorts to content to just tons of video, all in window cleaning. Hopefully all pretty awesome, too. So go, please do subscribe. That'd be absolutely amazing. So the next thing that we kind of talk about here in building a company versus building a job is time happens. This one is is odd because you un, you know time happens, but you don't see it until 10 years down the road. And you're like, whoa, I've been doing this 10 years. How did I do this for 10 years? Like Time happens regardless of what you do. And if you're building a job versus a company, the thing is, a job you show up to, you do your work, you go home. A company, you have to do everything to build the company, to make it secure, to make it a thing, to make it valuable. And time goes regardless of what you do with your day. In fact, you could just sit here and stare at the wall for the next 60 seconds, or you could go skydiving in the next 60 seconds. Jump out of a plane takes 60 seconds. Staring at a wall takes 60 seconds. Going to the bathroom could take 60 seconds. What you do with your time is what matters. Because it's all that is going to happen. You have a finite amount of time. Now, if you have a family balance or you're doing this and you want the freedom and you like to go and, you know, um, go fishing or do your thing, awesome, awesome. That's why you're doing this. That's literally why you're doing this. Some other people want to have something that is sustaining. It's doing its own thing. It's making its money so they can do that later and have more freedom and all that stuff. If you're doing it later, you're doing it now, you're building the company, you're not, your time matters. It's going to go regardless of what you do with it. So if you're building a company, not a job, remember that. Remember that every day happens in the same amount of time regardless of what you do in the day. If you're building a company, build the company every minute that your brain is in work mode. Now, some of you can't turn that off, and that's bad. Um, you'll burn yourself out, absolutely guarantee it. But if you're feeling really good, and say, instead of eight hours, now you're feeling so good, you do 10 hours, or put something in, that 10 hours is two extra hours. Every day, it's five extra hours. It's an extra day every week that you're putting in towards this business. If that's your goal, remember that side of it. What you do inside your day is what, pays those dividends down the road. I'm not telling you that every one of you needs to work harder because that's up to you. I could care less. So could everybody around you. If you have a company that pays the bills or you have a company that's insanely big and profitable and uh, smooth running and Everybody around you doesn't care. They may be envious of one versus the other, but if you do that or not, it's up to you. You're the one who really cares. Time happens. In a job, you punch the clock and you leave. In a company, you're building the future. So you may have to be a little bit harder on yourself than you think. You may need to up your game a little bit. Again, if you put in an extra hour worth of, it doesn't even mean you have to work over eight hours. But if you're just like, I kind of cut off a little bit early, I do something else, I drink coffee, I talk to the guys, I, I you know, I take an hour lunch. If you decide that you want to add an extra hour to your day, that's five hours a week. That's like 150 hours a year you've increased by adding one hour a day. 
How much more can you get done with an extra 150 hours? Man, I am bad at math. I'm going to do this right now. That's an extra 18 days. If for some reason, somebody had like a magic stopwatch, like, hey, I could pause time for eight. You'll get you 18 more days worth of work done towards your business. What could 18 days do? Not 18 days of you watching YouTube videos, which by the way, I'm glad you're here. This is, this is helping you to build this. But I'm talking about not wasting that, but doing something worth that. Time happens and it's up to you in deciding on what you do in that time. And if you're building a company versus a job, you need to raise your prices accordingly. You have to. This is one of the biggest pushback I get probably even more than like the dentist clothes. And um, it's the price thing. This is a true question. I can't hear you. I'm not there, even though it feels like I'm there. Uh, no, but I'm not there. But answer this question. Do you raise prices every single year? What's the answer? Now, you instantly know that every year you get better. Your company gets more efficient. Your experience increases. The thing that you do is more, but inflation also happens. Inflation happens, meaning the cost of the dollar is less. If, say, the new norm was $100 uh, for minimum wage, okay? The way that inflation works is that means that a cheeseburger will not be a dollar. Because to produce that, they have to increase, blah, blah, blah. And the value of a dollar changes. That's why like a minimum wage type system always can say the same. People who well, it changes. No one can live it. No, that's not what that's for. But what it's for is, is that it dictates the value. And if you inflate the value of money, that artificially inflates your, your economy, basically. But with that being said, is that if, say, last year there was a, you know, or, or this year, we'll say, say there's a 5%, 5% inflation, meaning that this year or next year, 2024, the value of a dollar is 5% less than it is this year, meaning milk's more expensive, right? So that dollar buys you less milk, that dollar buys you less gas, the cost of that money goes down. Right? This is why gas was 50 cents back in the day. Not because anything was cheaper to produce. It's because 50 cents was actually worth a lot more. That's inflation. Now, if that happens and you didn't raise your prices, this year, 2024, you'll be doing all of your jobs for less than you did in 2023. Yeah, but I'm faster. Okay, cool. But you're still doing that job for less. No one is paying you for the time it takes you to do it. Because if it took you 10 times longer or every house took you one day, they're not paying you more. They're paying you for the service. Increasing the prices keeps you up to inflation. I know people who haven't raised prices in 10 years. 10 years. Where were prices 10 years ago? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I've done them for... You lose money every year you make less money. No, my numbers go up. No, you make less money on every job. 10 years ago, you made more money on every job. Doesn't matter how long it took you. That's a job versus a company. A job you'll go 12 months before you get a raise, if you get a raise. In a company, it's the value of everything. Everything rises. People are paying you, your company, for your expertise. Your experience, your quality, you, the, the, the thing. If I start a computer company right now, it's a great computer. It's going to be really hard for me to charge what Apple does for a thing because you just don't trust it yet. I'm not proven. In a company, it is. They learn a lot of things by doing this for a long time. Raise your prices and don't be scared of doing that because that is how you invest in your company versus a job. That's how you, you grow up the strength of that company. 
And the last part of this thing versus uh, company versus job is to be everywhere. Now, what do I mean by be everywhere? I mean that in a company, you want to be seen as the company. You want to be so many places and in so many people's heads and creating so many experiences. And if you're doing the dentist clothes, they're all speaking your praises. You want to be everywhere. Because the new person isn't going to really know who you are. No matter how big or how awesome you are, you will not be a McDonald's. No one, Not every person in your town will know who you are because it just doesn't matter. In fact, I would say monthly you'll get somebody who goes, I didn't even know window cleaning was a thing. Of course. If you put yourself out there in more places, you'll eventually be seen by more people and they'll know that you're there. If everywhere you drove you had a spray paint can on the back of your car and you're making a red line. Eventually, most of the city would see places you've been. Because over time, everybody's crossed paths to some degree. That's how kind of advertising works and marketing and getting yourself out there and all the free things. And I know you may not have the money to do that, but be everywhere. Everywhere. Little, big, Paid and not, you should be everywhere to build your company. In a job, no one except for a few friends knows where you work. Stranger doesn't care. That's a job. But the company, everyone needs to know who you are. Not everybody's your customer. But it doesn't hurt that they know. It doesn't hurt that I have to throw a giant net out there so that when I bring the net back up, I could put some of the fish back. Those aren't the ones I wanted, but the ones that I did were in there. Being everywhere as a company is incredibly, incredibly important. Now, I know I told you number one thing is going to be repeat long-term, but how do you get the customer in for the first time for you to be able to get them into repeat? It's to be seen. It's to be everywhere. And people go, well, what should I do? Like, I don't know if I should, yes. You should absolutely do all of those things that you thought. If you have enough money to hire an amazing SEO company, like Monk, I talk about Monk all the time. I'll I'll give you an example from him. This is as a side note, obviously, just take it with a grain of salt. I've known Justin Monk forever. I've known that, I, I love everything he does. But with my company, when I moved, I hired him. I was not a company at all. And this was even when the last owner had owned that same kind of company that when it merged. I went from being not a company to being on the first page of Google in three months. This is not what I'm saying is going to happen to you, but I've never ever in the history of this industry heard of anybody doing those type of results before. Maybe you have. That's why I love Justin Monk. He's proven himself as an SEO company. As a side note, it's expensive. But if you can do that and you can be the first person out there, first person on Google, first person on places, first person with the reviews, if you could be all those places, which takes a lot of work and a lot of time, if you could do that, you dominate everything. Then you're so many people are seeing you, you're taking so much of the work and the market share, it creates this company. And if 50% of your entire city is using you and you get them all in on the dentist clothes. Think about those numbers. Now, obviously it all takes time. I understand, but that's SEO. It's expensive, but it's absolutely amazing. What about a vehicle wrap? Way less expensive, super, super great to be seen. What about Craigslist ads? Free. Not lots of people are going to see them, but it's a thing. What if you know people uh, that have a sports team, you throw them a couple hundred bucks for a sponsorship, they wear your shirt. You're helping, nobody's really doing, but you're getting more people out there. Now all of a sudden you see doing these little things over 10 years, five years, three years, one year, more people see you, you become everywhere, you become the company. Remember, your mindset should always be on building a business versus building a job. There you go. I'm off my high horse for now, but shameless plug number two, you know I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And I would genuinely appreciate and love if you let me put your orders in. That's what I do. It is not a bother because I get credit for that. That's how I make my living is putting orders in. And I genuinely, truly appreciate 
that you guys let me do that. And I do really want to help you with your business. So if you have any other questions or want to put an order in, 862-312-2026 is my number. Please let me know. I want to be your dude. I want to be your guy. Put me in your back pocket. Use me for everything. Send me pictures of any projects you have questions on. Let's do it. Let's build your company and make it amazing. If you haven't yet, go check out awcmag.com. That's the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It is the premier and only <laughs> window cleaning magazine that is real paper with the stickers that you get. Yes, that's what you see everybody covering their buckets and everything on. You're nerding out. You're in the industry. This is your life. Get into it. Go to awcmag.com. Get the magazine. Get the subscription. Stop procrastinating the subscription. Go get it. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, go to uh, YouTube, search out my YouTube channel. It's Jersey underscore nation and subscribe because it would be amazing. If all of you subscribed, I would have a few thousand more followers and the channel's relatively new for this. So I have no followers really. I would like to beat Steve up. <laughs> never, never will I do that. But anyway, there you go. That is it. Make sure that you're trying to uh, kind of choose doing the business over just a job. I'm telling you, it will make your life so much easier to do it that way. But more importantly, before next week, go out there and be epic.